Kamala Harris is in the African nation of Ghana today, the first stop on a three nation tour of the continent with the hopes of deepening U.S. African ties as Chinese influence there is already dominating. Washington Examiner Deputy Editor of Restoring America, best title of the day, Kaylee McGee White joins us now. Kaylee, thanks for being here. Look, I don't have a problem with the outreach to Africa. I actually think it's a really good idea because Africa is an up and coming continent that we need to pay attention to. But is this too little too late to counteract China? Well, you're right. It is such an important foreign policy mission because of China's influence on the African continent. But it really tells you all you need to know about how much the Biden administration actually cares about strengthening, strengthening these ties that they're sending Kamala Harris to go and do it. And second of all, we also know that the Biden administration doesn't actually take the China threat seriously. The president is on record multiple times simply calling China a competitor rather than naming it as an adversary. So the question is, whether this administration has the moral clarity to name the threat and then take action if necessary. Yeah, I mean, there is a very big push. First, it was the Secretary of State, then the First Lady Jill Biden, now Kamala Harris. President Biden has said that he was going to go later this year. But is there anything that Kamala Harris can say that's going to make a difference? I think that the best thing that Kamala could possibly do is not say anything at all. She has learned the hard way that the more that she gets out in front of the camera, the worse things get for the Biden administration. And maybe they know that. Maybe this is a way for her to finally get dumped off the 24 ticket. Uh, Kaylee, my concern is the focus, what she is going to be focusing on during this trip. And will she accomplish anything with regard to counteracting our number one enemy in China in that region if she's out there focused on ESG, environmental social governance stuff. Right. That's the problem, is the Biden administration's agenda has been very much so focused on culturally pushing our values onto other nations. And those values often do not align culturally. And so whether whether this is going to be another sort of de facto pushing an LGBT agenda, an ESG agenda on countries that don't want any of that, or whether it's going to be strengthening diplomatic ties with the goal of countering China, especially China's economic dominance in that region, that's the big question for the Biden administration. Yeah, I mean, China ranks number one in foreign direct investments to Africa, giving about $50 billion more than the U.S. That ranks the U.S. at number three with investments. I mean, do you think this is going to come down to money? Are we going to be shelling out more than $50 billion at the end of this? We might be, but my concern is also that while it's important to counter China's influence in Africa, it's even more important to counter China's influence in our own country. China is investing billions of dollars into U.S. farmland, into U.S. infrastructure. And the question is why we're allowing China to do that. Why are we not countering China on our own soil? So again, these are policies that really go hand in hand, and yet the Biden administration does not seem to take them seriously. Kaylee, besides top seeds in the NCAA tournament, no one had a worse week than TikTok, apparently. Lawmakers expressing bipartisan security concerns over the app. Listen. Both sides of the aisle were standing together saying, this is a threat to our children and we need to stop it. We got 150 million Americans on TikTok, average of about 90 minutes a day, and how that channel could be used for propaganda purposes right. or mis or disinformation advocated by the Communist Party. What the hearing made clear to me was that TikTok should be banned. I mean, look, literally almost everyone in Congress is done with TikTok. We'll get to it in a second, the person who's not necessarily done with it. But when you hear sentiment like that, do you think TikTok is just dead in the water? I think that Congress is certainly moving towards a bipartisan consensus that TikTok cannot be allowed to operate as it currently is. Whether they go with a full force ban on the app is a little bit unclear. I think what's more likely is a forced sale of the company, uh, forcing TikTok to sell to a U.S.-based company instead of continuing to operate under the current parent company, which is ByteDance. And I think that there's enough support on the Hill for a move, as, move like that. Well, and following up on what Todd said, meantime, Congresswoman when Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez posted her first TikTok in support of the Chinese-owned app. Listen to this. Hey, everyone. This is Rep AOC 
Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and this is my first TikTok. Do I believe TikTok should be banned? No. I think it's important to discuss how unprecedented of a move this would be. The United States has never before banned a social media company from existence, from operating in our borders. You know, and she also says, like, uh, big tech, they already have our data, so what's the difference in the CCP? I mean, can you imagine making that comparison? No, and there are only two demographics who are notoriously irresponsible, immature, and unable to see the long-term consequences of their actions, and those are teenagers and Democratic members of Congress. And conveniently, those are the only two demographics who right now oppose banning TikTok. So what does that say about that? <laughs> I mean, there are, there are a host of reasons why TikTok should not be allowed to operate in the U.S. under the current parent company. The, the data privacy violations, the lies about the data privacy violations, the spying on U.S. journalists, the harmful mental health effects on teenage girls, the deliberate algorithms that push teenagers toward violent propaganda. These are all reasons why lawmakers have to take this seriously, and it says a lot that people like AOC aren't. Yeah, this argument that this is unprecedented, well, you know what? It's not unprecedented to ban enemy spies right. from infiltrating our country. That has been done literally since we were founded as a nation, and that's what this is, and it needs to be viewed like that, not a fun app for a 13-year-old girl to make dance videos. Therein lies the rub. Kaylee McGee White, thanks for getting up with us on a Monday. We appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.